But God doesn't look at you and look at my uncle and go, okay, I'm going to spend more time with your uncle because he's got more money. God looks at you and says, I distribute my gifts to you as I see fit. You know, there's a King David over here and there's you as a manager of your family over there. And God says, I want you to manage your money as if it were mine. Because guess what? It is. This week, I want you to play a game. I want you to play the stewardship game. It's a game that you can't lose, okay? Like uh, guess your own age or count your nose. Can't lose this game. Okay, some of you are getting, I just want, I can't lose, count my nose, okay, one. Yeah, okay. We'll think about that later. First, here's what I want you to do. Every decision you make with money this week, over $20. I want you to ask before you spend that money, Lord, what do you want me to do with your money? Okay? I'm not saying if you go to the movies or go out for dinner with your spouse that it's the wrong decision. I actually think God wants me to take my spouse out to the movies and out for dinner. But I'm saying that when and if you do that, before you do it, you ask God what he wants you to do with the money. Okay? And... Uh, if you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not sure I can do that because God's going to tell me to give all my money away. Now, listen, I'm just saying, trust God because God's not going to tell you to give away all your money in all probability. Look, if you believe in God and if you, if you think that God was really going to tell you to give away all your money, do you not think that if God really wanted all your money, he could not just take it? God would be a whole lot more effective in taking all your money than a bank robber or a mugger at the corner of the street. If God wanted your money, you would go to the bank tomorrow and mysteriously find no money in your bank account. He's that good. I just want you to play this stewardship game with me and ask yourself the question this week, if you're going to do a transaction worth more than $20, to say, God, what do you want me to do with this money before you do that transaction? That doesn't mean you're not going to do the transaction. Okay, just um, just ask it. And then the second thing is keep track of what you do, the decision that, that he helped you make. So imagine, imagine walking into the office of your money manager and asking him for the latest record of what your money has been up to. And his response as he looks at the file is going, whew, you know what, I... <laughs> You know what, Ed? I really don't know what your money's been doing because I haven't been following it or keeping track of it. In fact, I know that you were in here last year and we talked about moving it into this stock and moving it over here, but I can't remember what stock I put it into. In fact, I don't know where your money is. Now, how many of you would like that money manager and want to keep it? So play the stewardship game this week. Ask God what he wants to do with his money. Do it and keep track of it. No need to be complicated, a simple uh, sheet of note paper so at the end of the week you can look at it and go, oh. Now, you don't have to keep track of what God wants you to do with his money. You could just pray to him and say, Lord, I don't want to manage your stuff, so would you come and take it all back so I don't have to worry about it? A little light laughter over here because they get it. It's not about a new life decision. This is about thinking differently. And I'm just, I'm asking you to do it for a week, not for a month. It doesn't matter how little or how much money you have. You need a system because your money doesn't belong to you. That's what the scriptures are saying. At, at the end of the week, you evaluate. Try to act like a manager for one week. See what happens. I dare you, even though dares are not a good thing. And I guarantee if you do this, you will not come back here next week disappointed. Guaranteed. And if you come back next week disappointed, you don't have to tithe next week. That was a joke. <laughs> I have to have a little fun with the money thing, okay? Because we're so tight about money. 
and the discussions. I want you to be free flowing, as, as free flowing as you want, talking about you know money with your spouse this week. You can email me with your frustrations or questions or positives anytime about the sermons, but especially sermons like this. You know what, Pastor? Why do I give or not give? Or is this, you know, what do you think? Or what does the Bible say? I, I love those kinds of questions. I love these kinds of messages for that reason. Got so many kind of comments and questions and back and forth talk when we did marriage for three weeks. And now we're investing in money for, well, actually, I think this series is four weeks, but we're going to take a break in the middle of it for, there's something important coming up. Maybe you've heard about it. It's called Easter. We'll take a little break. In any case, money certainly does talk. It's talking for this guy. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I do believe it all belongs to you. In fact, I, we, are amazed you would trust us with what you've given us. Lord, we want to be faithful stewards who you can trust with more, but would be just as faithful with less. In the name of Jesus, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap off for you.